Hey guys, so what we're going to do on the second question on this page, uh, it says the graph shows the slide, um, slide here, the end view of the elevation, the, or sorry, the end view and the elevation of the end of the slide are given, uh, draw the plan and complete the surface development of the cylindrical section. So what we have is, this is a picture of the slide here, 3D graphic of it, this portion of the slide is a bit we're focusing on, not the top bit down here. So it's essentially a cylinder that has been cut at an angle or truncated and the cylinder isn't sitting on the ground, it is lying flat on the ground on its side. So the base of the cylinder, which usually will, uh, like the last question we could see over here when it was standing up, in this case it's just been standing up and it has been put on its side. So what we have to do is, in the elevation, they've given us the elevation of it and they've given us the end elevation of it. And what we have to do is we have to draw the plan down here. So. We look straight at it. As always, when you look straight at a cylinder, you're going to see a circular surface. And generally, when you look at a cylinder from the side, you will see a rectangle. But as we can see here in this position, it has been cut at an angle. And that shape, when it is cut at an angle, will always generate an ellipse. So what we have to do is we have to draw the plan of it. So we'll get on with that now. Now, for the next part of the question, it said, draw the complete surface development of this structure here. So with that, we are going to do, I'll just zoom out there, and the surface development of it is actually going to drop down here. Okay? So, very much like the last question, have a cylinder, what are we going to do? We're going to roll it out. So, to be able to do that, what I'm going to do is, same as the last question, start off, when the cylinder rolls out, it's going to look like a rectangle. In this case, our rectangle has been cut. Somewhere out along here is going to be the length of it. Now, to be able to get that, what I have to do is I have to get the true length of one of those segments. So, I'm going to take the distance from one of my twelfth sections. So that distance there, because that's a true length as I look straight at it. that section there, take that and mark off the first one. We'll start here. And I'll mark it off 12 times. Okay. Top one, bottom one. Stretch is over. Top and bottom ones extend over, left and right, that would be the whole thing if it wasn't truncated. And if we take the very, very middle one, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yes, is the middle one. 1, 2, 3, yep, yeah, that's the middle one there. Now, if I take the middle one, and I'm going to imagine that was point 0, in this case, label again. So if I hit that at 0, that means this section out here, so here's 0, if I mark it out, then it'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 1, 2, 
three, four, five, six, and going the other way, it will be 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. And obviously, this being one end at 6, this being the other, once it falls back off, I know I'm right when the numbers are the same at the ends. Okay, now it's just a case of plotting my exact points. So 7 is going to be here, 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on. Now, I've already found 0, so now I've got to find 1 and 11, so just transfer them down. Same with 2 and 10, same with 3 and 9, same with 4 and 8, five and seven. Once again, labeling very important. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, five, four, three, two, one, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Just heavy in one little bit of a verse for doing. And there we go. We have the surface development of the bottom section.